everyone, happy holidays. This is Brian with Avid CNC, and I'm excited to share with you a kinetic wood snake project that we got for this year's holidays. So for this project, we grabbed a piece of oak that we had lying around. It was about one inches thick, and so we took it out first to the planer, got it down to a relatively even thickness, but I do know that this particular piece is not 100% flat all the way through. And so to help ensure that I get at least something a little bit consistent, one thing I had to make sure I do is that when I secure this to my spoil board, I try to start from one end with these fasteners and work my way down so that way it levels itself out and I don't have any sort of bubbling having going on through the board. And again, for more of a consistent build with inconsistent materials. Taking out the bit here that I have to set up for the first cut, and what I'm going to grab is a half inch end mill, so that way I can start going and planing down the thickness. But before I do that, I need to make sure I get the bit secured and start everything all zeroed out. Grabbing the zeros for this, I use the touch plate to get the X and Y corners as usual with the touch plate, but because I know this material is not evenly flat all the way through, and I want to be nice and consistent with my Z axis, so instead of having the touch plate here or there and possibly getting different Z heights, I decided to use the machine bed, something I know is going to be consistent all the way through between all my tool changes. So I started my cuts by doing some pockets so I can get everything down to the desired thickness. All the body segments and the tail are being cut down to three quarters of an inch thick. And the head segments, I'm actually having that be a little bit thicker so that way it's a bit more of a emphasis point, you know, the head of the snake and the rest of the body. And I'm cutting them down the pockets for each one of these, what's gonna be stops for some pivot rods I'm gonna have that's actually gonna be the links in between each one of my segments. my pockets are done, everything's cut to desired height, I come out and I'm going to do a tool change. I'm actually going to grab a ball nose quarter inch bit and I got this because it's going to be able to match nicely with the dowels I got that I'm going to be using as my pivot rods. They're both quarter inch in diameter and I'm going to be able to take advantage of the fact that it is a ball nose, make a nice one sweeping clean cut, everything should be able to fit nicely in there. And again, I'm using the machine bed as my Z0, so that way I have everything the same. Again, be reliable with my thicknesses. And then I'm letting it go, and it's cutting out the cavities of where the dowels for all my pivot rods are gonna go. And again, that nice ball nose is gonna be key to keeping everything consistent. So now I'm letting it go through and it's doing all the channels for where the pivot rods will go and I'm taking advantage of that ball nose to keep everything rounded off to match the profile of the dowels I'm going to have for the pivots as well as cutting out the cavities for the stops to make sure the dowel doesn't just go flop around everywhere and can have everything linked together. And then come up for the final tool change, I'm going to grab a quarter inch end mill bit. I'm using an up cut for this one, mostly because the visual side is actually on the bottom of this piece, so I want that to be 
nice and clean, and if there is minor tear out on the, along the seams, I'm not too worried about that. I'm also taking advantage of the idea that I have a upcut bit to do these dowel holes. And so these are all the locator holes for when I do assembly, it makes everything nice and easy to get everything all lined up. Now, one thing I noticed while cutting out some of these prototypes is that for this first one, I happen to make my tabs a little too bit on the light side, and so for future cuts I had to make the tabs a little bit taller to ensure that there wasn't any kind of movement when it was finishing up the profile cuts. Now for removing the tabs, I did want to keep them nice and small so that way this process goes by nice and quick, but again, for the future cuts, I'll have to make these a little bit thicker. I decided to take them off here with just a little flush cut saw, and I'm using the flat faces as a reference edge. Uh, it's usually nice to have the tabs on a nice easy surface like this, whether you run it through a router, using a saw, or even just trying to sand them off. It gives you an easy reference point so that way it's going to be easier to get everything lined up and not be so much of a hassle to make everything even. And for this, I just took it for a nice light sanding to clean up all the edges and all the faces. And this is just a prototype, so I just grabbed a sheet of 120 grit, nothing too fancy, and just doing a little bit of a quick cleanup. I wanted to make sure that I use the sandpaper on a relatively flat surface so I can have that as my reference plane when I'm sanding everything down. It makes it a lot easier than trying to hold a sanding block and get everything all through. And it makes quicker work of the larger faces. To clean up all these more rounded edges, I just use my wrist to follow the contour against the flat plane that I have my sandpaper against. And for all these little round stops, they don't need to be perfect, just as long as they're a little bit cleaned up. We have plenty of room within the body segments that we cut into. Something else that we did off of the machines, I grabbed some 3 8 inch dowel and quarter inch dowel to be used in the final assembly, and I just cut them all to a length of 1 and 1 8 inch. And to help make assembly easier, I also decided to break the edges and add a little bit of a chamfer to each one of my dowel holes. That way when I'm inserting them, they'll have an easier time slipping in there rather than having to fight against a sharp edge. Now the assembly should be pretty straightforward and simple to go. We just take two of these dowels for locating, put them into half the segments. And then I'm using some glue here. I am grabbed a bit of super glue, just because super glue tends to bond pretty well to wood, and it's a pretty quick dry time, so I don't need to let this sit overnight, especially if this is just a prototype to see how things fit and feel. This is a nice and quick, easy way to do it. I also made sure to grab some of the uh, gel formulation, so that way I don't have to worry about any kind of drips or runoffs that can lead to other things sticking unintentionally. I first grab the pivot rods, and what I'm doing here is that I am taking the circles and I'm having a little bit of glue on the dowel, giving a little bit of a twist to spread the glue so it's all the way on the inside face. And then again, I'm using this flat work surface I have to have the edges of these dowels 
line up with the flat face of the circles. That way I know that they're all gonna be the same consistent length. With all my dowels nice and dried, I just take a little bit of the same glue. I'm gonna put a couple of dabs onto each of the segments. And then I'm gonna take the dowels and just insert them into each one of their cavities and make sure they're lined up. And then I could just simply take the other half of the body segments, press them in, and I did leave the head last, just because I did make the head piece a little bit thicker. And so I want all these body segments to be put together first since they're all in the same plane, and then I can do the head last. sure everything is nice and tight. Gonna let the glue sit for just a few moments and then give it a test run. It's got some nice pivots, some nice motions. I will say that using softwood dowels does give it a little more of a looser feel and using hardwood dowels on other prototypes that I made, it gives a bit more of a sturdiness to the joints and I think I kind of like that a little more so perhaps in the next one. So after finishing up one of these snakes and get some polish on there, it really snakes me proud. <laughs> Alright, well I hope you enjoyed going through this project and walking through this with me. Keep an eye out for more projects, pro tips, and build videos we got coming out soon. Stay dusty and stay frosty.